So fluorescence microscopy is one of the most important uh, microscope used in uh, biological studies. It is uh, required to study the different cellular components by using different fluorochromes or the cells or the micro cellular components which can fluoresce automatically that can be identified with this fluorescent microscope. So in this lecture I will discuss about what is fluorescence microscopy, what are the fluorochrome and fluorophores and the components of the fluorescent microscope, working principle of fluorescence microscope, application of the fluorescence microscope. So let us see what is fluorescence microscopy. It is the method of living, examining the living tissue cells against a dark background with the help of fluorescence emitted by the specific components on exposure to a shorter wavelength of light that is which is less than 15 nanometer of light ray and it is called as fluorescence microscope. Uh, it is called as fluorescence microscopy. So in this technique the uh, EV ray which is less than 55-500 uh, nanometer uh, that is near about 360 nanometer of wavelength and as well as the blue light uh, around 400 nanometer uh, wavelength can be used to stimulate or to excite the cellular cell or cellular components so that they can produce the fluorescence and that fluorescence can be recognized with the help of this microscope. So fluorescence is the property of sub substances which when illuminated by light of a certain wavelength will they emit the light at a longer wavelength. That means they are being stimulated by a short wavelength light that is either UV or blue light and they are re-emitting the light at longer wavelength. So there are several numbers of the fluorochrome which, which is used to excite uh, the cellular components and they are excited with the help of the ultraviolet light and resulting a visible fluorescence light which can be viewed with the fluorescent microscopy or the, the help of the fluorescent microscope and the, pro, the image whatever produced in this type of microscope are bright and uh, the dark uh, backgrounds remains dark. So what are fluorochromes or, or, or what are fluorophor? Fluorochromes are the photoreactive chemicals that can absorb energy via the uh, interaction of the uh, of an orbital electron in the molecule's atomic structure with the photon of light. That means they are stimulated by the photon of light and they uh, these materials within these materials within their nuclear structure the electron seeps from one orbit to the next higher orbit and uh, then again the electron return back to its normal orbit, original normal orbit or ground uh, orbit and it emits the energy and that energy is in the form of the light and that produces actually the image. So these fluorochromes uh, or, or these chemicals are excited by specific wavelengths of light which, which belongs to uh, 360 nanometer it is like a UV ray and uh, uh, up to the 400 nanometer it is a blue ray of eradicating light and emit light of defined as useful intensity of longer wavelength. Fluorophore are the substances which possess the natural fluorescence that means fluorophore are the substances which possess the natural fluorescence means they do not require any fluorochrome. They can automatically fluoresce when they are stimulated with the help of UV light. So if the UV light falls upon the fluorophore substances that is the natural cellular substance substances which are present within the cell itself, it can be stimulated with the help of the UV light. So these fluorophore are normally present within our cell and then they can be studied with the help of fluorescent microscope uh, without uh, using any dye or like that. So what are the types of fluorescence we can found? Number one is primary fluorescence or auto fluorescence. Uh, these are nothing but the uh, flu fluorophore substances they actually show this type of property uh, belongs to this type of fluorescence. Then secondary fluorescence here the substances are stimulated or substances uh, which are having the fluorescence property they are used or utilized to, to uh, stain or cellular components so they are the secondary substances 
and induced fluorescence it can be done by using uh, there are some substances which are normally not uh, showing their fluorescence nature they can be stimulated or excited by a chemical substance which shows that then and the substance become activated and shows the fluorescence so this is this type of fluorescence is called as induced fluorescence so in case of induced fluorescence you are needing a substance you need the help of a substance which actually produce the uh, which helps the production of the fluorescence so let us see what are the uh, the examples of the primary fluorescence are vitamin a porphyrin and chlorophyll they do not require any uh, fluorochrome externally they can be st uh, stimulated with the help of the uv ray ray as well as uh, the blue ray so they can be blue light sorry blue light and they can be stimulated and they show the fluorescence and then they can be visualized fluorochromes uh, are like rhodamine fluorescein uh, so these are the fluorescence uh, they can they can they can be stimulated and they are used to stain the cellular components and when the light falls upon these substances they fluoresce and that uh, substances indirectly shows the presence of that particular cellular components and next the example this is the catecholamines these are the examples of the induced fluorescence they are showing the induced fluorescence normally they are inactive but when they are stimulated with the uh, with the formaldehyde or formalin they become stimulated and they show their they show their fluorescence property normally they remains inactive okay so there are different types of fluorescence whatever we can found so basis of this the uh, using this fluorochrome or fluorophore the fluorescence microscope are developed so there are mainly two types of fluorescence microscope on the basis of the design they are differentiated into two types number one is transmission fluorescence microscope number two is incident light fluorescence microscope transmission fluorescence microscope they are basically having a, this type of structure here uh, there is a lamp which actually produce the uv light or blue light and this light actually is passed through a exciter filter and this filter actually passes only the uh, lights which are having the wavelength less than 500 nanometer so then they are reflected by the mirror and they passes through the condenser and they falls upon the specimen stage and within the specimen stage when they are excited when the cellular components are excited the substance having fluorochrome property uh, fluorochrome dye or the substance which are having fluorophore uh, uh, which are substance which are fluorophore they become excited and they emits two types of uh, wavelengths uh, of lights some of the longer wavelength of light and some of the shorter wavelength of light then there is a filter wh which actually helps to pass the uh, long wavelength lights so that it can be visualized with the help of the eye but the lights having shorter wavelength they are blocked by this type of filter these filters are called barrier filter they actually it passes only the lights having longer wavelength and that can be visualized so this is the transmission fluorescence microscope instead of that in in case of incident light fluorescence microscopy you can find here that uh, here the light source is uh, uh, light source uh, emits a, a light which is which is passed through the excited filter and it has to fall upon a mirror which is known as dichroic mirror so this is the new adjustment which is used in this type of microscope what actually happens the dichroic mirror it actually helps to reflect the light having shorter wavelength so shorter wavelength light is reflected and they passes through the objective and they ultimately falls upon the specimen and the specimens become excited after excitation specimen they releases the light which are having both shorter and longer wavelength so here the uh, dotted lines are uh, the lights having longer wavelength and uh, solid lights are having shorter wavelength so the lights which are having shorter wavelength they are again returning back to the di uh, dichroic mirrors and from where they are reflected back uh, to the lights up to the light source or uh, they are reflected back to the object objective again but uh, here few shorter wavelength of light and the longer major amount of longer wavelength of light they passes 
and they enter the barrier filter where they are again sorted out and only the lights having longer wavelength they passes up to the eyepiece and shorter wavelength lights having shorter wavelengths are blocked here so by this process the fluorescence whatever developed here that is uh, due to the excitation of the cellular component that can be visualized with the help of the eyepiece yeah, or it can be attached with the computer as well as the uh, digital recording media also so this is the uh, peculiarity of the uh, uh, incident light fluorescence microscope where a dichroic mirror is used so these are the differences only the di difference is that dichroic mirror everything is there except and another thing uh, the uh, light comes through the objective in case of uh, objective lens in case of uh, incident uh, light fluorescence microscopy so what actually happens when uh, light falls upon the fluorochrome substances or the substances which are having fluorochrome or uh, fluorescence property so this is the structure of the nuclear nuclear structure uh, molecular structure of the fluorochrome substances so here this is the nucleus this is the electron which is uh, moving around the orbits so what actually happens when light falls upon these substances the electron becomes excited and it receives the energy and it moves from one uh, orbit to the next higher orbit and it uh, gains the high energy uh, in the and this is called as high energy excited state then what actually happens once it occurs then it tries to return back it normal level okay so what actually happens is it returns back to the, its normal previous orbit or lower orbit again but due to this when it is coming to the lower orbit it releases some energy in the form of light so these light then again uh, the specific uh, light specific light uh, having a specific specific wavelength and they can be visualized under normal eye and these lights are having wavelength longer than the uv or blue light so see this dichroic dichroic mirror actually helps in uh, proper development of the or the brighter image formation in case of uh, incident light fluorescence microscopy and it is responsible for exciting 90% of the energy can reach up to the preparation and 90% of the resultant visual visible light can be presented to the eye so it is it has the high capacity so what are the applications of the uh, fluorescence microscope it is applied to collect the specific cytochemical information from the living cell it is widely used for studying chromosomal bands chromosomal bands can be easily visualized with the help of this type of uh, microscope it is used to study the microorganisms also amyloids and mast cell can be studied very easily malignant cell can be identified by studying rna and dna and the transmembrane gaps can be distinctly identified with this technique and uh, without the help of this fluorescence microscope immunofluorescence study is quite impossible so these are the applications of the uh, fluorescence microscope